Yo, welcome to All Things Covered with Patrick Peterson and Bryant McFadden. It's part of the CBS Sports Podcast Network. Man, the name says it all. If you're rocking with us, make sure you leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get alerted of all our great content right away. Why are you at it? Hit us with a like and a comment as well. Now, let's get to our show. First quarter, you know what time it is. It's time for our school check-in. School check-ins are always great after a victory. It's almost like, you know, you know, you get a chance to celebrate the win, celebrate the hard work that went into getting that win. And it feels good for Minnesota Vikings fans and players to finally come out on the right end of a ball game. I mean, so many one possession ball games have ended on the wrong side for Minnesota, for the Vikings, overtime losses, things like that. But it feels good. It feels good to uh, finally get that big time dub that was much needed. Before we get into the ball game, let's talk about our very own Pat P. Patrick Peterson is what's on his license. Rehab update. (laughs) I mean, this is a very, very important week, not just for the Vikings, but for our very own Pat P. Hopefully he has a real successful week. Hopefully we see seven back out there. But, Pat, let's hear from you. Uh, do you expect to play? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. Feeling great, man. Rehab has been going great. Awesome. Um, been doing everything that, you know, um, team doctors been telling me. You know, still got, you know, this week of preparation. Hopefully, you know, I get cleared, you know, to come out and, you know, practice Wednesday and um, go forward from there. I know you uh, you mentioned to me that you were going to do some running. You know what I mean? How how has that been for you? Have you been able to kick it in full gear? Are you still kind of like taking baby steps when it comes to uh, running full speed? Um, yeah, I haven't really kicked it in full gear um, just yet, but I did, you know, get it good enough to where nothing. Where I had no complaints, you know, getting up to about, you know, 17, 18 miles per hour on land, which is, you know, that's good speed. Um, you know, trying to figure out how the hamstring is going to hold up. But, mm-hmm. you know, everything's been going great in rehab. Um, extremely pleased um, where I'm at right now. So hopefully everything continues to go great. No setbacks throughout rehab throughout this week. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. And uh, when it comes to, let's throw this out th- out there into the universe, when you play Sunday, will you be on a some type of pitch count? Or are they going to just say, hey, you out here like you usually been before the injury? I mean... You know, none of that has been discussed with me, but, you know, I'm the type of guy, once I'm out there, I'm out there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm going to have to get pulled off, you know, unless I can't go anymore. You know what I mean? So, you know, I expect to, you know, if I am, you know, fortunate enough to play Sunday, um, you know, I'll be, I'm going to be out there. I know you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you get a, a great week of prep. You know, good rehab, feeling good, feeling strong, so we can get a chance to see seven back out there because this is a big, big week. Uh, You mentioned something, you know, to me, and I know our listeners and viewers are probably like, whoa, what are you talking about? You mentioned something about 17, 18 miles per hour. Uh, Could you please elaborate on that when it comes to that speed for you and just kind of simplify it when it comes to our listeners and our viewers? Uh, No, just 17, 18 miles per hour is just how fast I'm running, you know, on land, you know, know, with the – all these cool tracking devices that they have mm-hmm. now in the league um, pretty much monitor, you know, all my steps, you know, my movements, how fast I'm going, my rest time, um, how I recover, this, that, and other. So that's how I was able to obtain, you know, that number, you know, through that tracker. And, um, you know, that was probably about, for me, about, you know, about 70%. You know, I was going to ask you, what's your, what's your top speed? Do you know your top speed? Oh yeah, my top speed I've been so far that I've been been tracked at. I've been tracked at 22 before, but that was like two years ago. Mm. This year my top speed is 21 six, I think. Oh, wow. You moving. Yeah, so the old man still got legs. Yeah, you you, you move. You can beat a little scooter out there. You know, the little scooters that they 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 push and they just <laughs> glide on. I know, I know hey, the scooter's not moving that fast. Yeah, I could be the 18 speed too. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah definitely can. <laughs> no question. Do they even make those anymore? I don't think so. Man, classic bikes. <laughs> classic, classic 18 speed. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. With the, yes, with the slim tires, with the skinnies. Yeah. With the gears. <laughs> and the spokes. 
<laughs> yeah, the spokes and the spokes. Well, hey, Viking fans, you guys know what time it is. Let's go ahead and go ahead and throw it out there in the universe and loud manifest. We see number seven out there Sunday making big plan plays for the Vikings. Now it's time for Chargers recap out in SoFi Stadium. Pat, you played out. Oh, yeah, you played out there last year. So it was your first time in the stadium. Vikings recap 27 20 in favor of the Minnesota Vikings. Eric, how close was I? Because, I, oh, I know what I did. Never mind. I don't even talk about it. It was 23 27, I think. Uh, yeah, but I picked 26. the other team. I picked the other team. Yeah. I'm the reason why y'all won. I need a shirt, a hat, or something. <laughs> I'm going to do it again today, too. I'm going to do it again yeah. today. But hey, Vikings eighth one score game this season, man. But like I said, it feels yeah. good to finally win one. Uh, you know, how, how did it feel, you know, finally, you know, being able to win a close game and, and ending on the right side of the winning column? Uh, it felt good. You know, it's, it's always you know, great to win a ball game, but it all it feels better to finally win that, like you, you know, talked about finally able to win that close ball game. You know, we've been in each and every game that we played in. It's not been a game that we 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 uh, we we've not been able to compete at a high level. You know, just a couple small things here and there that's been holding us back. Yep. You know, and from us getting those does, but you know, for the, for the offense to to end with the ball with a nice four minute uh, drive, um, offense in the in the fourth quarter, um, being aggressive um, on fourth down, had a fake punt up, but the ref called it dead. Um, you know, on defense, sending pressure at Justin at every, at, uh, at, at you know at, at at all times, making it making the pocket very dirty for him. Um, I just felt like. You know, we we came out and and, and really played some great team football mm-hmm. you know, on all three phases. Having a big punt return early in the game with with uh, DD, I uh, thought Kirk played well. Justin had a huge game, huge game with yep. 143 yards, uh, nine receptions. Um, and, you know, uh, and, you know, just I, it just all came together. Cookie had you know 90 94 yards, I believe. Man. Oh, I had cookie my fantasy team. They are supposed to yeah. they get in the they get in the goal line. They just they, they want to just run these fullback play play action passes <laughs> and all that, man. I know I'm selfish. I need my fantasy points, but yeah. he found, he did get in the end zone, so I yeah, appreciate. He did. Yeah, he did. but just he give did. him the ball every time you get him the goal line. Don't yeah, so cute. it was it was yeah, it was a great team effort. And um, yeah. as you know, November December football, you know that's yeah. it's important. And this and I know, you know, obviously, early on in the season they didn't go the way we wanted to go, but we didn't put ourselves in too bad of a position to where we couldn't be still mm-hmm. get where we want to go. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we're the eighth, eighth in the eighth uh, position right now. In the and NFC. seven and seven get in seven, seven uh, position right now in the NFC. So everything is still right there in front of us. And now November, December is when real football. No begins. question. Either you thriving <clears throat> Or surviving. That's what it's Mike true. used to say around this time. Wh- yeah. which, which which one are you? Are you thriving? Or are you surviving? Surviving, you're just trying to get through. But if yeah. you're thriving, man, you're trying to reach something. Talking about this win, I forgot. Defensively, you guys were able to win this ball game without yourself. Daniil Hunter, Harrison Smith, Anthony Barr, Michael Pierce. All significant players, man, and defense came together. This was a this was like a blessing in disguise. Remember this victory against the Chargers. And when you look at the end of the season, whenever that happens, remember the turning point. Playoff team, teams that get into the playoffs, especially teams that have a slow start, there's always a turning point in their season that jump started that playoff opportunity. Yeah. So for you, the folks that are checking us out, we applaud. We, we appreciate you for checking us out weekly, watching us or listening to us. Remember I said this could could be a turning point in the Minnesota Vikings season. Outside of the, the, the usual suspects that were healthy enough to play, is there once is there someone outside of the normal guys that we oftentimes highlight defensively that deserves some attention based on how well they played Sunday? Um, I think we talked about Cam last week. Yeah, we did. Thought Cam had another big game. Thought he had another solid game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, EK has, has been EK all year. Got hands like a receiver. Oh, Eric, oh, oh. I'm speaking of. Eric, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric, Eric Kendrick's been balling. Eric's been playing, been uh, been playing great. Uh, what, what, what's what's the safety with the with the with, with the good hair, the curly hair? That's Cam. That's Cam. Yeah, Cam. 43. Yeah, forty three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What you forty three? He can play. Yeah, X been doing his thing all year. 
Uh, Everson, you know, being a triple OG uh, that he is. He's been coming off the edge. Yeah, still coming off the edge. I mean, honestly, it's just the thing I love about this defense is just everybody, you know, especially when we win, everybody have their hands in the pot. You mm-hmm. know, it's just not that one person or that one game record. We have 11 possible game records on our defense. And that's the thing I admire the most. And like we talked about early on in OTAs, you know, even before I got here, is building the guy, the backups. No is, question. Finding a way to make sure, making sure that those guys are ready, and they're proving it that these no guys are more than ready when they get in there. They're not only making plays, but playing a significant role into the till us being to us being successful and yeah. also winning ball games. Yeah, and Eric Kendricks, he's having an All Pro year. He better make the oh, All yeah. Pro team this year. Yeah. I know we had him on during the training camp. You know, he felt some type of way. He should because he's been overlooked too many times. But this year, man, yeah. he's doing what he needs to do, man, making yeah. big-time plays. Justin Jefferson, Jettas, had a huge day. You talked about his numbers. Uh, how is he continuing to grow as a wide receiver? I mean, honestly, it's, 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 it's what you've seen in year one. But now he know what to expect now. You know what I mean? So everything is coming to him much easier. You know, nothing has changed. His personality didn't change. The way he the way he carried himself didn't change. Only thing that changes from year one to year two is now he he had that experience in year one. So now he understands and know what to expect, you know, as far as going into games, understanding, you know, how to study even, you know, even better on uh on, on DBs, how to study DBs, what they like to do, what they uh what they what they are good at. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So just adding those little answers to his game. <clears throat> It's going to just continue to help propel his career. Like I said, Justin has the uh, a legit opportunity to be recognized as one of the greats, you know, mm-hmm. to ever play this game. You know, and I just pray that the good Lord stay with him. Keep him healthy. Keep him healthy, you know, keep him on the field so he can continue show, showcasing that talent that he has and uh, continue to uh, etch his name in stone. No question. Keep it going. J- jet us. Jet us. Keep it going, Jet us. Keep it going, everybody, man, because this is a big week. Big week. Now it's time for our Packers preview. That is the next opponent for the Minnesota Vikings. You guys at home, right? It's a home game, right? Yes. Yeah, home games uh, against the Green Bay Packers. I know uh, they don't like they don't like you. You don't like them. This is your first time playing against the Packers in the Minnesota Vikings uniform. Uh, what have you heard about this uh, historic rivalry? Um, you know, obviously, you know. You know, a lot. And it's not even between the teams, and it's, it's all in Minnesota. You know, what I mean? oh, oh, really? Oh, so yeah. Just the, the, the entire, you know, the, the, the city, the state. state. Yeah, <laughs> they don't like anything coming from Wisconsin. You better not even mention Wisconsin. They don't like oh, nothing. I, I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And hey, I love funny, it too. Hey, funny story. When I was playing in Pittsburgh, of course, that same type of vibe with Baltimore mm-hmm. and Steelers. So we were going to play. Baltimore at home Sunday and on Friday I saw this on the news like most schools in 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 Pittsburgh in the city like middle schools and stuff like that it's jersey day you wear your favorite jersey so a kid happened I think he was in sixth grade he wore a Ed Reed jersey to school and they they sent them home (laughs) they sent the kid home they sent the kid home man the parents felt some you type wear of way. It? You can wear all yes. 31 other jerseys, Prince, but you can't wear this one. <laughs> you cannot. And it, it was a very, very important game. I mean, playoff implications was on the line. And the Night principal game, like, probably. Hey, said, man, forget anything you talking about being right and being fair. This is still a country. How dare you wear a Raven jersey with oh, the yeah. game that, yeah, they sitting them oh, home. Yeah. Hey, that's that same attitude and atmosphere here, man. I was in the, uh, what was I? Oh, I was at a turkey giveaway today. Yeah. I had to do my uh, my fifth annual turkey giveaway. Yes, I kept the tradition going from Arizona. Good thing, good thing. Minnesota. And um, <clears throat> one of the guys, he was like, yeah, man, y'all got them damn Packers coming into town. Whew. Please make me one promise. I said, what's that? Kick their ass. <laughs> I said, said we're going to do everything we can, God dog. Because, no like you said, this is a big game for us. It can put us in a really, really good position, um, you know, moving forward and also build some, um, some momentum uh, throughout the rest of the season for sure.
Yeah. Uh, teams, the, the the Packers and the Vikings have been playing since 1963. Uh, Packers hold the all-time series lead, 63-55-3. Uh, the great Aaron Rodgers is back in uniform. Didn't do a lot against Seattle, but his defense definitely did a lot for them. Uh, have you played against Aaron Rodgers four times in your career? What makes him one of the best? Um, Just his ability to throw his receivers open. You know, I was just watching film over the, you know, over the last two weeks because obviously, you know, that was my goal of coming back, you know, being prepared for that game. So just watching film on him this year, just his ball placements, where he's able to to throw the ball. You know, I, I saw one ball he threw to uh, Devontae. I, I, I can't remember who they was playing. I think they was playing. Uh, shucks, who were they playing? I can't remember. I can't remember the exact game who they was playing, but he like threw the ball literally right behind the DB ear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he only put it in position to where the, uh, can get it. the receiver can catch it. You know, yeah. so his ability to be able to throw the ball, um, put the receivers in, in tight spots is uh pretty incredible. Yeah, Pat, I mentioned that you were you've played Aaron Rodgers four times in your career, but you're three and one against the great Aaron Rodgers, including a big-time playoff win in 2016. So let's go ahead and continue to improve on that overall record against Aaron Rodgers. Talking about Aaron Rodgers, you have to you have to mention Devontae Adams, one of the best route runners in the game. Uh, what's, what, what's the keys uh, when you're going against a guy like Devontae Adams for a guy like yourself? You faced off against him many a times. You faced off against elite wide receivers many a times. But this is a special type dude. Uh, what's the keys for success when you're playing against Devontae? Um, you know, as 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 easy as it may sound, you just have to find a way to stay patient. You know, he reminds me a lot of uh, Amari Cooper. He's kind of like a counter releaser. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is, you know, most DBs, you know, take it sh like the shade aside or take away aside. So he'll counter uh, on, on counter reacting that he's going to make it seem like he's going to the side that you're not shading to force you to overcommit to that one side and come right back to where you once was. And mm. the same thing with the, with the Mark. Wait, so, so, so let me, let me try to simplify this with this question. So making sure our listeners and viewers understand if I'm guarding you and I'm playing outside leverage and yep. you're Devante, you're telling me he's going to attack my outside. No, he's going to attack your inside shoulder. Mm -hmm. So that's what he does a good job. He he do a good job of attacking ang angles. Mm -hmm. so he's going to try to attack that inside shoulder to force you to kind of open up because now yep. you kind of feel like you beat because you're taking away his outside already. So now once he take away that inside, that inside, uh, once he attack that inside shoulder, yep. now he you feel the DB feels that the, the Devante or the receiver is up on him. So now what he's going to do is you know, nine times out of 10, open the gate. Yep. So now once he's opened the gate, he now he has him committed, and nine times out of 10, he's going to try to come right back across the his face and get right back outside. You yeah. know what I mean? So the the, the biggest key is tr just trying to stay patient. And, 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 and how do you do that, Pat P? How do you stay patient when you got a guy coming at you full speed? He attacks one, one side of your leverage to open you up. Because the key is to try to stay square. Right. You but know, also, yeah. too, you know, you don't want to stay too square. You don't want to stay, stay square too long and they get a step on you, especially mm -hmm. in a deep route. You know, and now you're in chase mode. But how do you stay right. patient? Um, That's for the, the receivers to find out. <laughs> oh, 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 you're not going to go in the bag. You're not. <laughs> uh, hey, you he, never know. Devontae, Devontae might be watching the show, man. Uh, might be a Packers fan, right? You're right. You're right. You're right. But that's good insight on, uh, you know, certain releases. And and for our listeners and our viewers that have never played defensive back or corner, that's the thing. When you open up too soon, wide receivers, they got you. The best way I can explain playing a wide receiver and bump and run is almost like when you play basketball, you try to stay square to try to stay in front of them. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you open up, you give that basket, you give the guy the, the access. free range to the rim. You want to force the receiver to run humps. Humps. Yeah. <laughs> and then and, and be disruptive. That messes up the time. Yeah, most routes. Too are all timing routes. So you yeah. got to factor in. If you can be a little disruptive along with the pass pressure that's going to get to the quarterback, you can kind of disrupt the timing. So that's great insight coming from my very own Pat P against Devontae Adams. And yes, he is. He's one of the best route runners. He does a great job in attacking leverage and angles. Now, <sighs> important time right here, service announcement. It's prediction time. 
I told Pat P last week I was going to do something different because I kept picking the Minnesota Vikings. You know, it was only right. I said, Keep I'm going, gonna, man. I'm going to pick the opposite team. So I picked the Chargers last week. And what was my prediction you said, Pat P, last week? I think week? it was like 26-23. It was 27-23, something like that. Well, you guys won 27-20. Yeah. So last week it was 27. <laughs> God dang it. Boy, I almost got it. Last week it was 27 23 is my prediction. I told you, yeah. Y'all won 27 20. Man, oh, I'm on point too. Hey, Pat P, tell me why I got it. I know I'm getting off topic right quick. So someone saw my college prediction and hit for 10,000 on my Baylor oh. prediction. Yeah, that was my best bet. That was my best bet. They sent me a DM. Now, I, I need to send them my cash app and just say, if you want to send me uh, some Jordan money, and get right. a pair of Five percent, man. You just hit for ten bands on my on my Baylor pick. <laughs> but now let me get back to my prediction. All right, all right. So, like I said, listeners and viewers, if this is your first time checking us out, I've been picking the Vikings all year long. Last week I did something different. I picked the, the opposing team on purpose. The Vikings won finally a close one. I'm picking the opposing team again this week. I'm taking the Green Bay Packers. This the score will be. Score will be, give me two, Ooh. 32, <laughs> okay. 32, 24. Okay. High flying game, the over is happening. 32, 24. Eric, make sure you jot that down. Clip it and save it. 32, 24. 32, right. 24. And the Vikings are uh, two and a half point underdogs. They're getting two and a half. The total is 49. That's the total. Total 49, the Vikings getting two and a half. So for our gamblers out there that are listening to us, watching us right now, that's the line right now. It might be some line movement. We don't know. But right now, it's two and a half underdog for the Minnesota Vikings, and the total is 49. Let's see how close I get to it this week. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with some notable news from the NFL, and we'll be answering your questions next. Pat P, it's time for Around the League. Here's where we tap into news that surfaced throughout the NFL. Big time weekend uh, this past Sunday. Cam Newton was back with the Carolina Panthers, responsible for two touchdowns versus your former team, the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, How shocking of a return was it for Cam? Number one, when you heard Cam was signing your draft mate in in the class of 2011, uh, you know, what were you thinking? And then when you heard the results, uh, you know, from the ball game with Carolina, Arizona, you know, what came across your mind also? Uh, I was like, good for Cam. You know, mm-hmm. I thought it was a perfect fit for him, for one. <clears throat> going back to his old roots, uh, I think being in an offense, that's going to allow him to to uh, let the things that he do flourish. Um, having a running game, a defense that's been very stingy over the last month, um, and, and that's continuing to get better. You know, you know, adding uh, Stefan. Over there, over the last couple of weeks, you know, you know, he's been in the lineup over the last couple of weeks. Defense has been very stingy. Um, and you know, those guys want to play a controlled, tough football game. Yeah, and that's control the clock by running the ball, uh, you know, converting on third downs, and and playing some tough, nasty defense. And that's what they've been doing over the last couple of weeks. And once mm-hmm. Cam Newton gets gets back in the in the lineup, I think this team can be can be very dangerous, especially. If McCaffrey is in, oh, is I was about to say it. <laughs> I understand they're talking about the quarterback and this and that. Yeah. Listen, Christian, make it go. When he in there, he's not just the transmission. He the motor. He everything. Yeah, like he makes it go. Man, Pat P, the man quietly had ninety five yards in the first, in the quarter, first, first quarter, quarter. I think first the quarter first he had eleven receptions. He had fantasy wise, he had like 22, 25 fantasy points with no touchdowns. That's that's crazy production. Yeah. Like when he in there, you can have PJ Walker, you can have Luke Walker, you can have Kenny <laughs> Walker. It don't matter. And then when you factor in Cam, especially when he gets acclimated to what they're doing, that's a bonus. This that team, and I know you guys played them without Christian McCaffrey, but in their division, the NFC South, it was basically a one team division, but now Tampa seems to be a yeah. little rocky. If they can stay healthy and Cam can get acclimated up to speed sooner than later. They can make things real spicy because that yeah. defense is humming. Your former teammate Hassan Reddick, he been giving hell off the uh, off the edge. Uh, okay. uh, Brian Burns giving hell off the edge. Man, they got some. They got some guys that's biting. You talked about Stephon Gil- uh, Gilmore, Shaq Man. Thompson, 
Shaq, oh, Shaq Tom, I keep forgetting, he changed his number to number seven. Like, hey, I, was watching number seven. I was like, no, that's crazy. I was watching film the other day. Um, maybe it was last week, because we we just played the Chargers. Yeah, did, did, did the Chargers play Panthers this, uh, this year? Yeah, I played the Chargers and before the Chargers. No, no, did played. the Panthers play the Chargers this year? I don't think so. I don't know how I was watching them on tape. Oh, maybe I think oh, it was the Cowboys. When y'all played, nah. the, they, the Panthers played the Cowboys too. No, nah, I think it was a turnover tape because he had got a pick against. I forgot who he got a pick against. Yeah. I'm like, who the heck is that number seven? I, 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 like, where's 54? Yeah. And I asked, my, I asked Ty, I was like, who is seven? It's like, oh, that's, uh, that's, um, Shaq. Man, my mind just went blank. That's, um, Shaq Thompson. Uh, Shaq. He's like, that's Shaq. I was like, oh, he changed his number. I was like, man, that seven looked good on him too, man. But he, and he flying around too, hitting there the mouth. He flying yeah, yeah. around hitting people in the mouth. So that's a team you definitely need to monitor in the NFC South. And other news. Now, no, we are recording this right before the Monday night game. But your good friend, former LSU alum, friend of the show, we had OBJ on the show a year ago, making his return, playing for the Los Angeles Rams tonight against the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, understand the decision to go to a winning situation versus setting himself up for a huge contract. Can he still do both, Pat P? Set himself up to get a nice payday after this season and, of course, chase a championship. No doubt about it. <laughs> you know, especially this year, he's in prime position to do that. You know, you know, especially just with the name they have on paper. And with the injury, unfortunately, to Robert Woods, to it Robert will open Woods, up so opportunities. I think he can step in and be, uh, and be a huge contributor uh, to this offense, especially having a quarterback like Matthew, Matthew Stafford. Stafford that's going to get him the ball no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to have opportunities. Now it's going to be up to him to uh, obviously flourish from those opportunities. And I have no doubt in my mind that he will, because I, th- I still think he's a baller. He still can catch the ball. You know, like he said, he just needed to be out of the, the, the situation that he was in. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of whatever was going on over there. Now he's in another situation that, you know, he's a wi- around a, a winning culture, uh, some great players, um, a, 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 a offense that I, I feel – that can really get him back to the form that he will, that he once was at. Yep. A lot of creativity. I hear that they probably going to have him on punt return a little bit. Yeah, tonight. yeah. So uh, it's going to be interesting on. to see how it uh, how it all unfold because he is one dynamic football player for sure with the ball in his hand. So I'm going to be. It's going to be exciting to see uh, how everything turns out out there in uh, in La La Land with OBJ. I wonder what is his player props for this game because like i said listeners and viewers remember when you guys actually hear this this was pre-recorded before the monday night game so i don't know if eric can get get his props fast eric our producer is always on point he's a stat guy he's a numbers guy he's the analytic guy he does it all well I'm a, you know what i'm gonna say pat p since i'm in the, i'm in the mood to give predictions As a matter of fact i might need to put a bet in for this one too i need to see what the i know they're gonna probably have over under one touchdown. He gonna get a touchdown. He getting yeah, one. He, he going. He getting one. Oh, he got thirty three yards over under on thirty three point five yards. I'm. I, you know what, friend of the show, OBJ is going over thirty three and a half. Over. Rece- he might yards. listen. He might have that in the first fifteen. I'll say this: OBJ is going to be on the pitch count. He's not going to play a lot. He's going to have five receptions for sixty eight yards and one touchdown. Mm. Nostradamus has spoken. <laughs> Pat P, remember what I said, Pat P. But I you know, I remember everything you said. Hey, Pat P, I'm going to watch this game. I'm going to watch it. If he hit, God dang, what I mean, I said five receptions for, what I say, 68 yards? 65. 60, oh, yeah, no, 68. 68, 68. Five 68. receptions for 68 yards and one touchdown. Pat P, if that happened tonight, I'm telling you right now. I'm taking everything out my piggy bank. I'm putting the whole bet in on somebody on Thursday night, and I'm rocking and rolling. I love it. I already, all right. I, well, heck, I, I took the Rams anyway. I bought it down to two and a half, so a field goal will get me in the door anyway. But that's what I got for OBJ: five receptions, sixty-eight yards, one touchdown. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Now it's time for all things covered award. We're dishing out two awards weekly for those that live up to our show name and have. All things covered. The first award goes to the Green Bay Packers defense. Man, 
outstanding performance against Russell Wilson. Russell was 20 of 40, 168 yards through the air, two interceptions, no points. First time in his career, his team was shut out in his 150th start. Only seven quarterbacks since 1950 made more starts before their first time being shut out. A huge accomplishment for the Green Bay Packers. Their defense has been biting the last few weeks. It's good that they bit off a lot this past Sunday because against the Minnesota Vikings, they won't be able to chew everything they bite because they're not going to have a lot to bite. Let's go Vikings. But hey, they get the award this week. The Green Bay Packers, we definitely see what, see what you're doing. You had everything covered. All things were covered this past Sunday in Lambeau Field. Now, let's transition to the offensive side. This is a play I was high on during the draft last year. I felt like he should have been the first quarter first quarterback to get drafted. He didn't. I felt like he was the best thrower of the football in college football. He was the most cerebral guy, the smartest guy, the most accurate guy. The return of the Mac. Mac Jones is our offensive award winner. 19 of 23, 198 yards, three touchdowns, highest completion percentage, which was 82.6, and pass touchdowns three in a game this season, six win this season, and he did it against a playoff caliber team in the Cleveland Browns. Uh, he's tied with Jim Plunkett. In 1971, Jim Plunkett uh, had six wins. That was the most wins by a Pats rookie quarterback. Also, he did something that Tom Brady has never done in his rookie campaign. He threw for three touchdowns, no interceptions. The first time that happened in, in Patriots organization history since the 19. 19- 60s I think it was the 50s or the 60s but he is the offensive player who is the best Pat P for you the best rookie quarterback that you can remember guy that had an unbelievable rookie year uh I got two guys for you right now I got Lamar Jackson Ooh. I thought he had a great when he did get in there and start playing he had an unbelievable I think he was what like eight and one yeah I Something can't. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and my second one that I've seen, six and one as a rookie. Um, eight, uh, and my second one, man, I'm gonna probably have to, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go with a toss up. Oh, I'm gonna go with, yeah, I'm gonna go with a toss up, man. I'm gonna go with Robert Griffin, the third. I thought his rookie campaign was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. And I gotta go rookie. Cam Newton. I was about to say. Cam, Cam Newton came on the scene. His man. first game was 400. He had 400, right? Yeah. Against your Cardinals. But hey, but I had to walk off home run. You baby. had to walk off. Yes, you <laughs> did. Yes, you did. That that 2011 class showed up big time in that ball game. Yes, sir. I'll go, I'll go Cam and I'll go Justin Herbert from last year. Yeah. I thought just Herbert. had a good year too. But that when Lamar came in, because you, you got to think about it. When Lamar came in, right, you know, obviously he went 32nd. Mm-hmm. What he was able to do. In college, all the critics, oh, he ain't going to be able to do that. He ain't going to be able to do this. He just came in, just ripped the lead up and have, and he he's, still he's don't still have right. a <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, he's so still. That's, right. why I, that's why I say, like, what he was able to do, because, like, Justin was, when he came into the league, we all knew he was going to come in and be a pocket passer, strong on, put the ball everywhere. But with Lamar, you know, we really didn't see him throw the ball as accurately, uh, really put the ball down the field, really working in a, in a prototype um, offense. Um, and what he's what what he was able to do throughout his rookie year and still able to do, it, I think it's just remarkable. No question. I love it. I love it. Hey, man, shout out to our award winners, Mac Jones and the Green Bay Packers defense. Seven questions. Seven questions is where we get a chance to interact with you, the listeners and the viewers. If you want your question to be answered in the future, uh, leave a question attached to a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, and we may get to it on the show. Uh, this question question comes from E. Berrettini <laughs> on Instagram. I hope I didn't butcher it too bad. Favorite cliques you've worn either for a personal swag or my calls, my cliques? Ooh, good question. Personal swag, I gotta go yeah. up my diamond turfs, Dion. Oh <laughs> man, hey, well, you can't why where they at? You can't get them painted. Can you bring I them back out? I don't want to paint them, man. They, that's the original color, so I gotta keep why my you keep, off. can you wear them? Wear them. No, I can't wear they got red in them, man. Man, my it's so wet. You see guys <laughs> wear green cleats in their jersey blue. You see guys wearing yellow cleats in their jersey, <laughs> <You> say, man. <laughs> man, bring them diamond turfs hey, out. What I'm gonna do to Eric. I'm gonna, you all the pit. I'm gonna see you. I got three pairs too. I got the the diamond turf ones and twos. What, what you doing? 
the, I got the red joints, the black joints, and the first ones that Dion wore when he was in Whoa. San Fran. What can't you wear the black ones? The black ones got red in the two. I'm gonna send you a man, picture. I'm gonna, man. I'm, gonna send, I'm gonna send them to you. We can, up, we can put them up on the care. show. We can put them on the show, but why you can't, man? Bring them, man. Don't do that. <laughs> man, you know what? Like San Francisco, you might see somebody with yellow cleats on in San Francisco. They got red and white. You can, man, man. that black and that man, bring them diamond turns out there. Cause man, see, I, this let me tell you. This is how much I know about my guy, Pat P. I used to always monitor his uniform. You know, I always monitor. <laughs> when you had them diamond turtles, them high whites? Yeah. Ooh, I said, boy, somebody going to get it today. I said, he already about business. When I see Pat P walk out them high whites, them diamond turtles, I said, I don't care who he going to get. It might be hell out there. Don't even, throw, don't even do it. If he catch a point, he probably going to take it yard. If you yes, throw sir. Point, hey, take a, a quick story about those cleats, too. I wore them the last time playing in Candle on, uh, on Candlestick Field. Playing against Randy Moss, I think this was his last. I think it was like his last layer. I think he had just came from New England, if I'm not mistaken. I, I can't remember no, where he just came. I from. I think he had went. To, he went to Tennessee and then San Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's probably I what think, happened. I think. I think that was it. Man, I dropped a man. A pit hit me right in the face, Matt. Red zone seven route. I'm on Randy Moss, second, third year in the league, run a seven route. And I know actually seven is, is a, a corner route. Seven is a corner route for our list. Yeah, seven is a corner route. This is actually this is my second year in the league. I dropped a pick to tie Richard Sherman, and I forgot who it was one more guy for eight picks in the league. I, I finished seven. Well, with seven picks that year. And you dropped. It was easy. It, it, easy. easy. It was too, it was so easy that I was relaxed because Randy, like I think Colin had threw the ball. Actually, he threw it so bad. Like he uh -huh. threw it, he underthrew it bad and like. Randy was high. And I'm like, this here just coasting and my hands were just all soft and it literally went through my hands, hit me right in the face, man. Bang, piss. Mm. And you had them diamond turns on? I did. High you white. know I'm gonna harass you all week. <laughs> you know I'm gonna harass you all week. I, I won't see them know. diamond turns. And, and listen, and it's, boy, you could be, come on, Pat, please stop. If you got three uh, pair, if you got three pair, you can at least paint, get something, you can get one of them painted to, to fit the purple. <laughs> and white and yellow. If you got three pair, I know you got a custom guy, someone who can get them done ready for I, you on Sunday. I feel I I I'll see what I can do, man. And what I might do, I might not wear them Sunday. I ain't gonna lie, I'm probably not gonna wear them Sunday. Okay, okay. But I might wear them for uh the either the Pittsburgh game or uh Chicago Monday night. Oh, and then what you should do if you get them painted, have them the bottom either painted all yellow or all yeah. purple. <clears throat> I got Ooh. you. I got you, man. Send, this when we release this on YouTube, we, Eric got to make sure. I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you. I'm actually. I was looking for the picture right now. I'm gonna see yeah. your picture right now. But I, I gotta actually uh, answer my my favorite. My calls. My uh, cleats. My calls. My cleats. Yep. My favorite ones is the uh, nightmares. It didn't actually. This wasn't no my cause. I just. I went, I really don't participate in it. Mm -hmm. So for this one, I just literally did my own theme. It was nightmares. Uh, I think it was the nightmare. Nightmare on Christmas night, mm -hmm. and I had those. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send those too, so we can have all, all of them on um, on the show. I like it. I like it. Nice question coming from Eric Barrechini, Barrechini, on Instagram. Thank you for that question. Hopefully, I'm. I'm sorry. I need to say Eric. I mean E Barrechini. E. Baratini. Hopefully I didn't butcher it too well, but thank you for that question. And uh, we're going to make sure we're going to harass Pat P until he wears those diamond turfs. And if you don't know anything about diamond turfs, there was a Gian Sanders signature shoe that was a sneaker and a cleek. And uh, Pat P had a pair. He has three pairs, and I'm trying to get him to paint them Minnesota Vikings color uh, so he can wear them against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm going to harass him until I actually see the shoe on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> right, shout out. One of them. You find one of them? Yeah, I got one yeah, of them too. right here. Time for shout outs. We want to remind everyone that you can find us on Instagram at All Things Covered Pod. Continue to give us a follow, uh, monitor us, man. We appreciate all the support. Each week we give clues to our next guest, and the first person to guess correctly gets a follow and a shout out on the pod. Shout out to Viking Fan Page, a big time follower of the show uh, for correctly guessing John Smoltz. Again, follow us at All Things Covered Pod for the very, very best content from the show. That's it for this episode. Thanks to everyone for listening and watching. We'll be back again Thursday where you can expect all things to be covered. Peace. Peace.